Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. I'm often asked about my startup sequence, and so in this video we'll be going through a very advanced startup sequence. You can see that on my Workbench drive I have all of the directories installed. Workbench that you recognise, this is Workbench 3.1, and underneath all those I actually have directories with all of the Workbenches in there. So these are untouched Workbenches apart from 3.9 where I've got a duplicate and all these are reference workbenches which I can boot into at any time depending on the ROM that I used to boot into originally. You can see there's quite a lot there and not all of those are what I use. So let's have a look at my startup sequence. You can see the very first line of my startup sequence is in S. It says run nil sys fast mem first. That means well, that's a Workbench 1.3 command, which I've copied over from Workbench 1.3. That means any fast memory that we've got will be used before chip memory. And that means that when we finish booting, we should have almost 2 meg of chip memory left and everything else has gone into fast memory. That can be critical for WHD load games, so I like to run that first. Run nil means that there's no output onto the screen. It runs in the system directory which should be dh1 the workbench directory in c fast mem first so once you've run that command it should prioritize fast mem or any slow internal memory over the chip memory that means you've got as much as possible and then we look at the system drive we look in c again we look at version we check to make sure that there is a nice version on the exec library that it fits in with what we're going to do next and I'm not quite sure what this is for because it's been so long since I edited this and created this startup sequence but it basically checks the exec library in the system ROM and if it's over or under a certain thing it will go to Workbench 3.1 otherwise otherwise if it's not that ROM then it operates a command called do job if it's ROM number 33, it executes a script S and it goes to S directory, kickstart 1.2. If it's kickstart 1.3, it's job 34 and it executes 1.3. If it's 36, then it's kickstart 2, but in this case I'm running 3.1. If it's 2.1, then we're also running 3.1. And then if it's 3.9, then that is kickstart 3, so we're running 3.1. And in that case, it's still running the script startup sequence 3.1, which means for most of these options, I'm actually still using Workbench 3.1, unless that is, we're using kickstart 1.2 or 1.3. And then according to this, well, if, if it's any higher than that, then it's still running 3.1 and if it's over well if it's kickstart 40 it's running workbench 3.9 that's kickstart 3.1 i think it goes actually to workbench 3.9 and then if it's any higher than that it's still going to 3.9 and then that's basically saying run that script in the startup sequence so each one of these boot commands it's checking the the boot version number of the kickstart ROM and it's booting into the appropriate startup sequence for that. So that's pretty complicated and it looks pretty complicated and do job is available on the Aminet. Else if you can't do any of them it still boots into startup sequence 3.1 as a fallback measure so instead of coming up with any errors I can't do this and I can't do that it still boots it up and it ends if it can't do anything it just ends if so if you're running a really wild kickstart it might not do anything after after doing all them it then runs an assign for directory opus and assigns that to our workbench directory is the opus 4.12 it then runs the assign x command 
and then it runs SysTools MCP which I've demonstrated in another video which makes MCP appear on the screen I've then blanked the Go Workbench drive command because that's incompatible with some Kickstart ROMs from Colanzo so instead I've loaded Workbench and I've ended CLI the normal way using end Workbench delay and end low Workbench and end CLI nil so this is my actual startup sequence it checks the ROM it loads up the appropriate file once it's done that it then assigns Opus it then loads up those extra tools and then it loads Workbench so let's check out what my startup sequence 3.1 is so in this case it's quite familiar it loads up the version command and checks that and C assign sys to dh1 well the, the sys drive is whatever drive that you're booting up from so sys should be automatically dh1 which makes that entire line redundant so sys will automatically be dh1 so I don't have to assign sys there but if I swap the drive numbers around or something like that or a boot from a different drive then we'll have to make sure that the system is actually the system so then it prints the workbench 1.3 echo command again and it says I'm loading workbench 1.3 but this time it's degraded mode and that is because it will only load up the basics it's adding buffers to DHO 200 which is supposed to speeds up the loading of DHO I'm not sure if it actually does that on emulation but on the real Amiga it definitely does do that and I've added some memory cache buffers to DH1 as well 50 which may or may not speed up the loading of Workbench and then I use the copy command to copy the SRAM icon info remember info files are always icons and infos I copy a RAM icon to RAM and I rename that as disk info that will print a nice RAM icon on my RAM disk and it will basically copy that from S into RAM and make a nice RAM disk every time I boot up the computer so that's just a cosmetic change and again you don't have to do that and if it exists on the system directory WB startup I rename that using my rename command I've renamed to ren I run ren and I rename it to dash WB startup and that means because we're in degraded mode it will not boot any of the applications in WB startup that we've got in there and that ends if so that renames it so that we don't load any of those applications and then because it's a degraded mode I then assign everything to where it's going C, S, E, N, V, E, N, V, Arc, Fonts, L, T, Rex, Devs, Printers, Key Maps, Locale, Libs. I've assigned Libs to two places for some reason, and also the Help, which is also all these are standard on the standard Amiga. So the only things that I might have changed at the bottom, I've added a path in the command line interface to the C directory, and also DH1 utilities which means I can access those without having to type the path in I've set map to GB set the key map to Great Britain and I'm copying uh, from the libs directory a compatible version of the ASL directory little library and I'm copying that into libs and calling that ASL library that basically copies a more compatible version of that into workbench so that I can use that and that doesn't work with most things but this is degrade mode so I'm doing that and then after that I print done and that doesn't really come up on screen because after that it returns back to my normal startup sequence and it boots up it MCP and then it ends workbench so this is it it's pretty straightforward it assigns a few things it sets a path to a few things sets the key map to GB copies the RAM icon in and that kind of thing but this is my startup sequence full directory which is something else entirely which again I'll, I'll go on to in a bit this boots alternatively with the 3.1 so you can see everything's pretty much similar except this time it says full boot mode I assign a few buffers 
and then echo i'm assigning patches and speed ups so now i'm running a c command cgx aga no idea what that does set patch which is on aga we definitely need that the caches command is something that i got from my power computing high density hard drive that switches on the caches of my cpu if i'm running an all 30 the instruction burst the instruction cache the data burst and the data cache will be switched on with my caches command which i'm not sure is on the aminet but you've got the cpu command which is does pretty similar thing and then c patch control i've no idea what that does it could be something to do with an external patching program or mcp itself or even an external emulator, I don't know, but whatever, I'm running the patch control command and output whatever error messages to nil, so I don't get to see any of them. And then run sys c uh, blaze wcp, which is supposed to speed up something on workbench, maybe to do with window opening. I'm then running the copy RAM icon to RAM again. I'm renaming the startup sequence if it's got a dash in front of it i'm renaming it to wb star subsequence so it will run the commands in there and the applications in there and then assigning everything as usual on the bottom assigning everything including directory opus which seems to be assigned twice because it also assigns it when this star sequence is finished and returns back to my other one and then the path again goes to c and dh1 utilities that's the same as it did before so that's the same um, mounting a pipe and again no idea but some applications need something called a pipe I don't know what that is some copy buffer some thing to do with something but I've mounted it anyway because it's one of those DOS drivers set map to GB again set my keyboard to QWERTY and I'm now putting let's see the high compatibility ASL library in instead of the low compatibility one. I'm not quite sure whether it says low there, but anyway, that's putting the high or the low compatibility mode one in. Uh, running the monitor bind drivers, so all my PAL modes load up and all my WinUAE graphics modes also load up that are in the monitor's drawer. I'm not bothering to set or unset workbench. I can put semicolons in front of those so I can rem all those lines out so that they don't get activated and the computer will simply ignore all those lines. No idea why they're there, but this obviously came from the original Workbench 3.1 startup sequence that I've since edited. So I set and unset those as usual. Uh, I then run nil C add data types which will again load up all those image um, packages so I can load up the images and that's not crucial unless you're using multi view but if you are using multi view then you'll definitely need to add those data types in so that you can view all those different file formats I'm running n click which stops the disk drive from clicking and that was critical on a normal Amiga and I've copied that across to this emulator and so if you don't have drive clicking selected audio wise then you don't need that and run assign x it looks like i'm running assign x twice because i've also got it in the other startup sequence the main one but it never hurts to run the same thing twice and then starting air x which is air x you can run advanced commands which operate applications and do scripting with air x CPU no MMU test, I think that's the normal CPU command. I've got caches to do that. And then I'll load up my iprefs and then I'll load up my new icons. So it's looking at a command in C called iprefs, which comes with Workbench, it's now running it. That's a standard Workbench command. And that will mean that I've got any high screen modes set up and any high color modes, it will now run and load those up. It now runs the new icons command so that I'm running a new icons library so that the new icons come up and a new default icons as well so that when I create a new drawer or an application those come up with new default icons rather than the standard workbench ones and I think that 
also comes with new icons. Now what I'm going to do is loading MCP and MUI. So I'm loading up MCP, which is again on my normal main startup sequence, so it will load it MCP up anyway, so I've blanked that out. And I'm also executing in the C a script called MUI, the multi-user interface or whatever that is, and that loads up an extra package, a cosmetic touch. I'm now copying a press screen mode file to EMV sys screen mode prefs and that as far as I know starts the 64 screen colours on machines which don't have 64 colours selected so non AGA machines basically I'm loading up a different screen mode pref based on that in case I'm not running an AGA machine and then loading, I'm loading the WE startup sequence and the user startup sequence. And so the WB startup with renames, it should do that anyway. I'm now executing with the rename D execute command, which have rename DX. I'm executing S the user startup, which is again a normal workbench command which has extra startup commands in there for the advanced full boot mode. And then there's an echo which is done. And if you see that, then something's gone wrong because usually it ends CLI there. And then my user startup, which are again optional commands. You don't have to load up any of these, but some applications will install to the user startup. So again, I'm assigning the hard drive, the uh, hard disk to ZH1. I don't need to assign sys to DH1 because I've already got it doing that. It will do that anyway because it's the boot drive and Fredfish applications. If you're running a Fredfish search application it will need you to assign Fred to T which we know is in RAM T directory. If you're running A to Z spell you'll need to assign that to trans right and assigning temp to temp. Miami which is a dialer for the internet to Miami. MCP goes to MCP. Go fetch which is downloading things off the internet. I'm assigning that to the comms directory. I'm assigning Photogenic SE, which came with Workbench 1.3. I'm assigning Virus Executor to DHO Virus Executor. And again, these programs will make their own assigns so that when you do a click on that, it will know where to find itself and its old files and all those different files that it needs. Same with uh, Superview 4, I'm assigning that and the library. And then YAM is your Amiga Mailer, it's an email package, I'm assigning that to comms YAM. And I'm assigning the JPEG data type, I'm assigning Candy Factory Pro, and running the command, I'm assigning Personal Paint, DPaint 5, uh, Amiga Web 3, and then CA Prefs again, I'm now assigning all the MUI commands which go into the user startup sequence when you install MUI it will automatically install all these residents I think so I'm making resident all the MUI libraries so that if I'm running a MUI application those are already in memory and I'm also making resident eyebrows codecs for JPEG if I'm running eyebrows which I never do but these are all these are all remaining from what I used to run on my old Amiga setup when I used to run eyebrows and MUI which is eyebrows is a MUI application and then when I'm doing resident classes a data type I'm making sure that the Amiga IFF ILBM data type is in memory so what else it's loading up the XFD patch which decompresses compressed files I'm running directory opus real time whatever that does, I'm assigning Picasso 96, assigning Can Do, assigning Gamesmith, assigning the game T0 to Games T0, and also the T0 editor as well. All those are optional and they will be installed by packages, so mostly you won't have to touch them. And those are all known as the user startup sequence. Checking a look at my Workbench 1.3, this is definitely one which will boot up if we, if we have a Kickstart 1.3 ROM installed. It sets prefs so that it 
copies the system configuration from DH1 dev system configuration blue so it's looking like it's uh, setting the prefs on the old workbench and it makes the background into a nice blue background and DH1 workbench 1.3 I'm assigning the system to DH1 which is our workbench drive to workbench 1.3 which is another workbench installed in there you saw the complete package earlier on and so it will then boot Workbench 1.3 using that. And in order to control all these multi-boot systems, I've made myself a directory called wbconfig, and in here you can see virtual monitor drivers and things that I used to run to get various monitors and TVs to work on my system. None of those you really need to know, and all these setup stuff is for monitors. But what I've actually got in here is a couple of scripts. One of them is called WB Degraded Mode, WB Degraded and User Startup, and WD, well, full. The full one that you've already seen, that's the full Workbench loading thing. And when I double click that, it says instead of Workbench 1.3, I copy Workbench 1.3 and create a backup of that. And then I copy Workbench, the full one, and I rename that as Workbench 3.1. and then it will boot into that and again in degraded mode it renames the existing 1.3 and creates a backup it will then rename one called basic which we've seen already the basic boot startup and it will rename that startup sequence 3.1 and then it will reboot and when you reboot with the 3.1 and 3.0 in there it will load up startup sequence 3.1 using degraded mode